Leviticus. And uh, we're going to read from the 18th chapter of Nectar of Devotion, the character of one in ecstatic love. And this section is called Attraction for Living in a Place Where Krishna Has His Pastimes. Actually, we started this, didn't we? Yeah. Okay, here we go. There are many so-called devotees who artificially think of Krishna's pastimes known as Ashtakaliya Lila. Sometimes one may artificially imitate these, pretending that Krishna is talking with him in the form of a boy, or else one may pretend that Radharani and Krishna both have come to him and are talking with him. Such characteristics are sometimes exhibited by the impersonalist class of men, and they may captivate some innocent persons who have no knowledge in the science of devotional service. However, as soon as an experienced devotee sees all of these caricatures, he can immediately evaluate such rascaldom. If such a pretender is sometimes seen possessing imitative attachment to Krishna, that will be not, sorry, that will not be accepted as real attachment. It may be said, however, that such um, Imitative attachment gives the pretender hope that he may eventually rise onto the actual platform of pure devotional service. In other words, just like I was saying, if you have some public teaching or some, some public communication that's suitable for everyone to hear, then you give that in a public place and uh, then you may have some private or personal confidential teaching that you give in a more intimate way or in a more uh, restricted place. Huh? So if someone is talking with Krishna, or if someone is, uh, is talking with Radha Krishna, he's not going to do this in public. See, this is, again, is mixing up the, the material body and the spiritual body. The direct service to Radha and Krishna is performed in the spiritual body, not in the material body. Uh, how, could, how is it possible that our material body can approach the Lord? It's not possible. Uh, it has to be done in a spiritual body, in our original spiritual form. It's internal, it's inner. It happens in deep meditation, in deep states of trance and samadhi. It doesn't happen out in front of everybody. Huh? That's bogus. So if we see somebody trying, you know, imitating all these ecstatic symptoms, oh, hello, Krishna, how are you today? You know, I mean, this is just nonsense. This is imitative devotional service. Imitative attachment. This imitative attachment can be divided into two headings, namely shadow attachment and para, transcendental attachment. If someone, without undergoing the regulative principles of devotional service, or without being guided by a bona fide spiritual master, shows such imitative attachment, this is called shadow attachment. Sometimes it is found that a person actually attached to material enjoyment or salvation has the good fortune to associate with pure devotees while they are engaged in chanting the holy name of the Lord. By the good grace of the Lord, one may also cooperate and join in the chanting. At that time, simply by the association of such pure devotees, the moon-like rays from their hearts reflect upon him, and by the influence of the pure devotee, he may show some likeness of attachment caused by inquisitiveness, but this is very flickering. And if by the manifestation of such shadow attachment, one feels the disappearance of all material pangs, then it is called para attachment. You follow? Yeah? Okay. No, you don't follow. Yeah. Okay. So in other words, let's say there's some devotees out chanting. Uh, they have a chanting party, and they're out on the streets, and they're going around chanting the holy name. 
with great ecstasy. Huh? They're attached. They're pure devotees. They have attachment. They have taste. They have steadiness. They have purity. Huh? And let's suppose there's some rascal standing on the side of the road. And he has no spiritual master. He doesn't practice any sadhana. He doesn't, he doesn't have any knowledge of scriptures. He doesn't know Sanskrit. He doesn't follow any rules. He doesn't chant japa. Nothing. Huh? Just like, like Uddhava calls it, standard rascal. <laughs> okay. And he comes along. Here comes the chanting party. And he starts going, oh, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, and dancing along with the devotees. You've seen this. Huh? They start dancing along with the devotees, and they don't even realize it. They don't even realize it, but they actually get into some transcendental mood to some degree huh? by reflection of the energy of the devotees. You see? This is called... This is called this shadow attachment, and then there's a reflection of attachment. In shadow attachment, someone is simply imitating, simply imitating uh, externally something that should be happening internally. Okay, and that's also called sahajya, imitative. In para attachment which is also called abhas, means reflection. Nam abhas, for example. Okay? One chants the, the holy name or performs some other devotional activity and actually gets some result. Huh? But usually due to their lack of knowledge, they don't realize the value of what they're getting. Huh? So they, they just pass it by. They don't keep it, they don't, they don't value it, they don't treasure it, they don't cherish it. Okay. They have a, a transient experience of devotional ecstasy, and then in the next minute they forget it and they're off doing something else. Okay. So try to understand. The, the holy name is so powerful Devotional service and devotional activities are so powerful that even a moment's association with a pure devotee can result in a development of emotional symptoms derived from bhakti. But without the knowledge of the value, the great value of devotional service, these symptoms will be very transient. They'll come and go very quickly. And people will... Uh, will not value, they not, won't give them the proper weight, the proper value, see? They'll take it all very cheaply. Huh? Just false ego stuff, you know? Frou-frou. They won't say, oh, wow, this is the perfection of life. No. They'll just do it because they want some temporary material enjoyment or because they want... Uh, or even they, they're thinking of salvation or something, or some impersonal idea. You know, they won't do it because they're really sincerely searching after love of Godhead. They'll just chant because maybe they think it's a fashion or it's a fad, or they'll get the, some uh, little spiritual benefit out of it so that they can merge into the absolute. <laughs> See? They're actually impersonalists. They don't understand bhakti at all. So, this imitative, wait a minute, I said that already. Ah, such shadow attachment or para attachment can develop if one associates with a pure devotee or visits holy places like Vrindavan or Matra. And if an ordinary man develops such attachment for Krishna and fortunately performs devotional activities in the association of pure devotees, he can also rise to the platform of pure devotional service. The conclusion is that transcendental attachment is so powerful that if such attachment is seen manifested even in some common man, by the association of a pure devotee, it can bring one to the perfectional stage. But such attachment for Krishna cannot be invoked in a person without his being sufficiently blessed by the association of pure devotees. In other words, if he doesn't have the knowledge 
of how valuable devotional service is, then he may just uh, take it up and then give it up again very quickly. Uh, he, it requires association with pure devotees and learning the meaning, the value of devotional service. Uh, that this is eternal. This benefit that you get lasts forever. Uh, I mean, you may get some tiny little material, temporary material benefit, like from chanting Vishnu Sahasranam, the reduction of material miseries. Uh, you may get, you know, freedom from disease, or you may get some financial blessings, or you may get an improvement in the, in the condition of your life, uh, the material condition, by some uh, superficial engagement in devotional principles.